Today, I want to talk to you guys about your callings, the gifts that God has given you, that you have gifts and calling from God, that he chose you for such a time as this. Do you understand that you are born today in this season, in this time of history, out of all the, the centuries and decades and thousands of years and all of those things, that he chose you to be born when you were born and to be living at this exact time in 2023 and everything that's going on around us, everything that we're going through, he has a plan and a purpose for you in this season, in this time in history. I love it. I love that about our God is that nothing is by accident. Everything is his sovereign under his sovereign or ordination. And that just brings such safety and comfort. And it's just so amazing. And so today I want to talk to you guys about uh, our gifts and callings from God and, and how to start to discover that and, and start to walk in that. You have a plan and a purpose. You were born for such a time as this, sister, just like Esther was born in her exact time of history to be the woman that freed God's people. You, dear sister, are born in this exact time to use your gifts and your calling to glorify God help build up his church. And so uh, I just want to kind of give you a backstory. I was thinking about my own, the own gifts and the own callings that God has given me. And, and I remember thinking um, about when I was a little girl and I had to actually kind of laugh, but I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I remember when I used to play Barbies when I was really little and like little other girls would come over from the neighborhood and they'd be like, can we play Barbies? And we had like this whole setup where the, there was just this one room, um, and it dedicated to all of our Barbies. So like our, my Barbie stuff was in there and everything I had, and they'd come over and they'd want to play Barbies. And so we'd play Barbies, but before we could play Barbies, we had to teach them how to play Barbies. There had to be instruction on playing Barbies as if any little girl needed to learn how to play Barbies. But I would give them a spiel like there's, okay, so this is how we're going to do it. This is going to be the theme. You know, we're going to play Barbies. You know, that's how we do it here at my house. And, and we have a certain way that we play Barbies. <laughs> it's like this whole little mini teaching about playing Barbies. And I was laughing because I had totally forgot about that. I totally forgot that I did that. I mean, I was doing that at like age five, six, seven, eight, you know, very, very young, but it's, it reminded me that I have always had a desire to teach. If I learned something, I wanted to teach it to somebody. And I remember just always looking up to my teachers in school and just always thinking, oh, they're so amazing. I want to be like them, you know, and never really thinking like actually go and be a teacher, but I remember just being drawn to them or I was probably drawn to that gift that they had. And so, you know, as I grew older, anytime I would learn something, whether I was reading a magazine or reading something and I would learn it, I couldn't wait till I could tell my friend, my girlfriends or whoever about what I had just learned. Like, oh my goodness, I was just, so it didn't matter what it was. If I um, was learning about, because there was a time unfortunately it's in my testimony that I loved astrology. I loved numerology. I loved, um, those kind of things. And so I would learn everything about everyone else's signs. And then I would go and teach them like, Oh, you're a so-and-so. Well, then I can tell you all about yourself <laughs> and it's such a deception. But, but the point is, is that I always had this gift and this desire to teach anything that I was learning to somebody else. I loved it. Absolutely was passionate about it. But then of course you get older, you grow up, you become an adult and we put away those childish things or what we think is childish, right? And we now start pursuing things based on circumstance. So I got pregnant young, I got married young and I wanted to uh, have make a good income and I wanted to you know raise my daughter in, in a certain way. And so- I went out and started my own business at age 20, 20 years old. And I started uh, a commercial cleaning company actually is what I started. And I got it from my mom. My mom had done that. Um, she had made a very good living doing that. And I, I watched her do it and she mentored me and taught me. And, um, and so I went out and I started my own cleaning company. It, it was little, I started my mom when I was 20. I started my own by the time I was like 21, it was like a year later. 
I went, went off and started my own uh, commercial cleaning company at a very young age. And it was very successful and it was, it did really well. It, it really um, provided a great lifestyle for our family. But, and I had all these dreams wrapped around it. Like I wanted to franchise it and do all these things and whatnot. But, you know, again, I became more interested in raising my daughter, which should be, that's where my focus that was rightly where my focus should be. And so um, I would, I was like the cheerleading advisor and the softball coach and PTA mom and all the, you know, I did all of that. I was that person. And so I was always doing those kind of things. And so that kind of took a backseat to trying to even grow my business any more than what it had already grown. Um, and so honestly, but that wasn't my dream. That was my passion. It was, I loved the entrepreneurship part of it because I've always been very entrepreneurial, but it was not who I was called to be, right? That's not who I, I was, you know, that's not my gift that God gave me. I wasn't going to change the world by cleaning toilets, though I appreciate cleaning toilets. And I thank you for all of you out there who uh, maybe you are a residential cleaner or a commercial cleaner, or you clean for schools or uh, medical or, you know, clean your own house. Uh, praise God, because, you know, we, keep everything clean. I think people realized just how valuable we were during COVID, didn't they? They really needed us during that time. They appreciated our, our, our cleaning skills, right? So I praise God for that. God has uh, provided very well uh, through that, through the years. But then it just became, um, when I became born again, I truly became uh, saved. Uh, my passion became all about God, all about Jesus, all about him. And that teaching gift was always there, always wanting to learn and then teach somebody else. And eventually my cleaning company eventually became what we call a tent making. It was basically, we kept it going. We didn't try to grow it anymore. We weren't trying to do anything with it. It was literally just something we did in order to, uh, what Paul did, how he made tents to sustain the ministry. And that's what Steve, that's what me and my husband did. We, we made tents um, and continued to do the, the company so that we could bless others so that we could, um, take care of our basic needs, but then go and, and really sow into the ministry of God's work. And that's where everything kind of shifted in my life. And so what started happening was I was, I was in ministry full-time, but I was still working on my business part-time. And it was so funny because the whole point of me telling you this story was when, there was a, that would come a time where I'm working and I would work day and night in ministry. I mean, we ran a food pantry. We were doing homeless camps. We were discipling people. I mean, we were going house to house. I mean, we were, I mean, we were in the throes of it. We were so busy because we do a lot of outreaches and whatnot. And we were just serving day and night, like seven days a week. It was, it was beautiful. I loved it. it brought me so much energy. Absolutely loved it. But then I would get called in, like someone would call off work or something would happen. I'd have to go clean a building. And it would maybe even take me an hour, maybe two at the most. And I would think I was dying, like literally, like I would show up there and I'd be like, I don't know if I can do this the whole time. This is, this is taking me forever. And I mean, my joints would ache, right? Like I, I can help you take 2000 pounds of food out of the van and set it up for the food pantry. But in these toilets is like killing me right now. And it was like, this is crazy. Like, why is that? because it wasn't my passion. It wasn't, it didn't give me this supernatural energy and this supernatural joy, though I appreciated it because it is what provide, provides and puts food on the table and it blesses others. And it is that tent making source. It was not what I was called to do. It's not my calling. It's not what I'm passionate about because when I am out doing ministry work, when I am teaching, when I am preaching, when I am giving, um, when I am out evangelizing, when I am loving on people, when I am, you know, serving in any capacity, I am fully energized when I'm around the body of Christ. I just get this supernatural energy. Even if I'm not doing anything, I'm just among the body, just sitting there and, and they're and, and hearing them talk and, and, and whatnot. I just get so energized. And so I understood this is not my calling. You know, and that's when I started to really realize that our calling will bring a passion and an energy into your life like nothing else will. And so today, as we're talking, how do you discover your calling? How do you know like what that is? Well, one thing I did, so number one, you know, 
Go back to your childhood. Is there something that you can think of that you did as a child that you absolutely loved doing that you, you just, you, you're like, I want to be that when I grow up or, and I'm not talking about like the, the typical, I want to be a police officer. I want to be a fireman though. That is a calling. And maybe that is you, but for the most part, that might not be, that might just be the atypical uh, type of callings. But what was it something that your heart was just bent for? Something you just love to do? Something you, that kind of, you know, kind of brought you energy or, or something you just really valued. And, and if it, and just kind of just work those things out, obviously everything needs to be taken back to the word of God and, and to God. So like, you know, for me, passionate about astrology and teaching people about astrology and being able to tell them all about their lives and, oh no, don't date him because you guys don't, you guys aren't compatible. Right. But what was, what was behind that? What was behind that? Teaching was behind that counsel, discipleship, um, <clears throat> encouragement, being able to, um, give advice, <clears throat> excuse me, give advice and just bring out that, you know, their gifts in them. Right. So these are, you know, so go Go deeper, go deeper. Don't look at just the, well, I really want to be a fighter fighter. Well, let's go deeper than that. You know, you loved saving lives. You loved um, being part of a rescue team. You liked rescuing people or, you know, so, so, yeah, so then we think, well, what would that be in the body of Christ? You know, maybe, you know, going out and rescuing um, homeless people or being a part of the, uh, the sex slave industry and, and bringing rescue and refuge to, to these broken women. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm throwing things out there. Work with me here. Another thing. Uh, so that was number one. Number two, what brings you so much energy that you can literally do it all day long. And yet physically you might be a little tired, but you still have like this supernatural, unexplainable energy that just, you can keep going. Like, you know, if you have to change one more diaper, you're ready to just, maybe you love changing diapers because you love, that's your calling as a kid. And that could be too. You had to clean one more toilet. Like, let's just say my case, because, you know, what a beautiful gift actually to change diapers and raise up the next generation. So, so let's say you just don't want to clean another toilet, <laughs> you know, clean toilets makes you just takes all your energy, but then you go out and maybe you, you know, you love when you're in el someone's el home and they're elderly and they need their toilet cleaned and you're cleaning the toilet and you could clean 20 of them if they had 20 toilets because there's just something about you being in their home and, and serving them and loving them and knowing that you're doing God's will and God's purpose. So it just brings the supernatural energy. Um, you know, it's just, I want you to think about that. And number three, because I just have three small things. This is just to get us thinking today. So this is not some deep you know, revelation where, you know, but let's just think about this. Number three, if money, because money is often our obstacle, like we need, we think we need money or we think we have to do it because we need money, but say money's not an object. You, you have plenty of money of all the money you're ever going to need. So take money out of the equation, education, you know, just take that out of the equation. Well, I have to have a PhD or I have to have that. Okay. Don't worry about that right now. Um, I need time. I have absolutely no time or I don't live in the right location. Take, just take all of those things out of the equation. Pretend that you have all the money you need. You're fully educated. You have tons of time and you live exactly in the right location in which you would need to live in. What would you be doing with your life besides sitting on the beach, enjoying the beautiful sunshine and the, and the waves, which is amazing because I love the ocean and I never get to go there, but I love it. Um, what would you do with your life? Like, honestly, like, how would you want to serve? How would you want to, you know, show up in this world? How would you want to present God? How would you want to shine for him? Like, where would you want to bring him the most glory? Like, what is that? That if time, money, education, location, none of that matters right now. It's just, you have everything you need. What would that be? write that down. There it is. This gets us closer to what you're called to do. I love teaching and preaching Jesus. Absolutely love it. I love the word of God. I love all things word of God. I can, I, I will, I am energized just by sitting in a room uh, with two people 
they just start asking questions about the word of God. And we start talking about the gospel and we start talking about apologetics. Apologetics is like a defense of our faith. So we start talking about, you know, other religions or why Christianity is the way, the truth and the life. You know, we start talking about some of these things, theology, doctrine, we just, all things Bible, we start talking about church history. I instantly like get this surge of energy that I could just stay there all night long and talk about the things of God. I, I literally could with anybody that's interested. I, that's how much I love it. And I have done it. I mean, I've been at people's houses till three in the morning, absolutely exhausted, had no sleep the day before. But as soon as we start talking about the things of God, I'm in, I'm all in for as long as it takes. And I absolutely love it. Okay. So I love teaching, love preaching. I love God's word. It brings me a supernatural uh, energy that just changes me. It just transforms me. And I want to feel that way all the time. And I know that's not necessarily a, you know, a reality. We're not always going to have this euphoric feeling, but it does make me feel almost like I'm high. I was recently preaching. I was asked to preach the gospel at a boy's prison and they asked me to do, they had eight units and each unit has about, you know, say 25, you know, kids. And so I said, yeah, I would love to, but I had to do, I had three days and I had to preach the same, basically the same message to every single unit individually. So over a span of time, you have about 150 kids plus staff members and everyone there was overseeing and watching and whatnot. And in one day, I think it was the last day I did four units back to back, took a lunch break back to back. And if you've ever done any type of public speaking or any type of, um, educational things like that, or any type of, you know, preaching, teaching, it literally, it just takes everything in you to do it. It, I, I, it just, it does. It just kind of like, you know, takes everything in you. So by the end of the night, I, I was there Sunday, I was there Monday and then Tuesday, and it was there all day, Tuesday and all night, Tuesday. By the time I left there Tuesday night, I had done the last one and I left there. My feet hurt, you know, my mouth was so dry, but I was so on fire. Like I was so energized. Like if they would have said to me, Amy, there's another prison down the road. Would you like to go and do like this again tonight? Like right now I would have said, yes, that's how energized I was. My body physically ached. My mouth was dry, right? I needed to eat. I was really hungry. I remember I was really hungry, but my inner man, my, the Holy spirit, the spirit in me was so just on fire and so energized and so full of joy and so full of just happiness. And I remember just crying, like, you know, not only crying because, you know, the gospel, because I, I preached the gospel. I told these kids about Jesus Christ. The only answer to their, their problem is Jesus Christ and how he can transform their lives. And, and then I got to see, um, children, you know, rise up and, and hear the gospel for the first time and, and have some response and just the beautiful work that God had done in those three days. And I got to just lavish in that. And I just remember just sitting in my car, just like weeping, but I was, I was weeping, grateful, humbled by the Lord to be used by him, grateful for all the, you know, just the hearts that were touched, grateful for all of it. It was the way that I felt. It was that this energy, this, this, um, love, this joy, this peace, this laughter, this, this happiness. It was like, it was like, I was high, honestly, you know, and, and I'm sure there's like that dopamine release. I'm sure there's some science behind that, but adrenaline, whatever, but it just had me in a euphoric state, but in a good way, like just in this beautiful way. And I remember saying, I looked over at my husband and I said, that's where it's at. If I could do this every single day of my life, somehow, some way, preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ every day of my life and never make a dollar, I don't care about money. If I could just do this every day of my life, I would be so fulfilled. Like that would be it. Like that, that's it. Like this is my life. And I, and I knew at that point that I wanted to work towards that but I wanted to make that a reality that I am able to put forth to the body of Christ and to the world, the gifts 
in the calling that God has given me personally. Um, and I, there's going to be another podcast I'm going to do on when we, when we're doing good things, but we're not doing the excellent things. See, I, I was doing a lot of good things. I was doing a lot of great things, but I wasn't walking in that perfect will of God. And we'll do a podcast on what is the will of God. We'll do one on that too. But what is the will, will of God for me is to preach and teach the word of God to women, to disciple women, to be that tightest woman that raises up other women to then go and also walk in their gifts and their callings and walk as God has called them to do. And so I just encourage you today to start working on that, that inner purpose, you know, what has Holy Spirit called you to what what are the gifts and the callings in which you have been given you know you were born for such a time as this you were born you were separated from your mother's womb for this paul talks about that in um galatians how he was separated from his mother's womb to become the apostle to the gentile nations even though he was going to murder he was going to do there's a whole message just in that but you were separated from your mother's womb for this and so what is that? What is that call? What is that that brings you energy, that brings light and life and love and joy and peace and happiness into your life? What is it that God has called you to? And I'm so excited to kind of hear from you on that. I'll have the homework in the notes. Um, I'll have those three questions. I'll have these three questions for you in the homework. What brings you supernatural energy, joy, and excitement? What is it in your childhood that brought you excitement? What was it, something you were just naturally good at, naturally kind of born to do? Um, if money and time and, and people and, and location and education and those things were not a hindrance in any way, shape or form, you have all of that's taken care of. God's already taken care of all that. What would you be doing right now today? Okay. And let's just kind of start working on that, you know, and just pray into it and say, this is what I would be doing. And, you know, come to the Facebook group, sister, and and post in there and tell us what that would be, because we would love to pray with you. We would love to, uh, you know, speak life into that and, just, and to pray into that and, 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 and just see where God does with that and how that lines up with the word of God and, and where, you know, just, it's just so beautiful. And I want to see um, you be all that God has called you to be just as he is all that he's called me to be. And we are one body with many gifts. And we need one another. I need your gift. I need you to walk in your calling. You need me to walk in my calling. And you, I, we need each other to walk into it because that's a complete body. That's Christ is the head and we are his body. And so I'm excited to do this journey with you. And I can point you to other places where you can go and figure out more about your gifts and callings. But what I really want you to do is just be alone with you and God and the word of God. And let's see what the Holy Spirit through the word is revealing to you. <clears throat> okay, sister, you have an awesome day today. Um, all the links will be in the show notes. Don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, like, and share this video with anyone that you think can bless them. Really would love to get the YouTube um, growing more so that YouTube will throw the videos out more because they're algorithm or whatever. If you're listening to this on your podcast, don't forget to go and give me a five-star review, please. It helps just put it out there. If this is blessing you in any way, we want it to reach other sisters uh, in Christ all around the world. And the way that we do that is by sharing, is liking, reviewing, you know, those kind of things. That's just what the social media people, that's what they do. Right. So, um, that's the only reason why I ask because otherwise I could care less, but I would love for, um, God's word to, to just get out there to whoever will be willing and want to listen to it, um, through this particular ministry. So God bless you. Have an awesome day. Go be the church and allow God's word to just transform your life. Remember, we are not a crock pot faith, or I'm sorry, we're not a microwave faith. We are a crock pot faith. We live in a world where we want everything right now, fast and easy. That is not your walk with Christ, honey. It is going to be a crock pot faith. It is a slow cooker, slow cooker, but I promise you when it gets, when you, as you are transforming, it is worth the wait. So God bless you. See you soon.